It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's another DJ Roundtable show. It is Tuesday night and 8 o'clock Central Time. We love being here live on Twitch. And if you're watching us on Twitch, thank you so much for being part of the Roundtable. And if you are over on the tubes and watching us on the repeat, uh, again, thank you so much for watching us over on YouTube. Do me a favor, help me slay the YouTube beast, which is always hard to do. Make sure that you first hit that like button. So give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you know what's going on. Hit the bell icon. And then one more thing, make sure you share the video with someone. Because, you know, sharing is caring, but also helps the channel grow and get more video and more DJ's hand. They have more stuff going on. I do appreciate, and I do appreciate everyone who subscribed to the channel. Again, we got a full house tonight, plus we have a guest. <clears throat> You've probably seen him around the interwebs here and there or here on Twitch. Uh, John Colley here is always from Boston. He Hello. is our guest tonight, and he is here to uh, take a turn at the round table, have some fun here with everyone. We have Billy C. We haven't had him for a little bit. He's been rocking and rolling over there in Ohio, uh, not far from uh, Mr. Dixon. And, of course, we have all our rest, our great DJs here, Hunter, Jeff, Brentley, we got Matt, we got Sean. He is actually on remote right now. We have Taylor and Jordan. We have the two of them over here as well. Uh, you know, it's always great to have all these great people on the show, on here, having fun. And, and again, we thank you for being out there. So let's go on with some fun things here tonight. Uh, you know, we were just talking a little bit a minute or two ago uh, about wedding shows and about how we do things. And I wanted to ask you, uh, do you have plans for wedding shows this coming fall? And if so, how many wedding shows do you want to line up for? How many shows do you want to have for this coming fall? Is it one or two? Or do, or do you have a plan of doing multiple wedding shows? So I'm going to start with Matt because... He was talking about the last wedding show he did, that he did a great aspect of uh, business. What, what about you? What do you think? We only do two um, because there's really only two companies. Uh, one is significant, not significantly, but it's like between 10 and 20 bucks for a ticket. And then they do have like a VIP package. It's like $75 a ticket. So you get a lot more warm leads out of that one. Um, and because I did the owner's daughter's sweet 16 and the other daughter's wedding we off the books get a little bit of a hookup so uh it's significantly cheaper than the other show so i mean either show if we book one wedding it's paid for itself but uh i enjoy that because there's more warm leads coming from that and then we of course do the other one that's the acs show which is probably in everybody here's area where they live uh, because acs is the biggest company there is for wedding shows and other consumer shows and expos. So we do that. And that one's more just a volume number and, you know, cast a big net, catch a couple fish and make it worth it. So we, we do those. I'm trying to focus more on content. Uh, we have a huge 55 inch vertical screen that uh, everybody watches as they pass by our booth and I could tell that they're interested. So it's very flashy. It's um, that gets a lot of attention. And then we use the CO2 gun until the venue tells us that we're not allowed to. So usually it lasts two or three hours. And then uh, the fire marshal comes by and say, hey, you can't do this. And uh, that gets attention too. So you got to make yourself stand out instead of just being a booth with somebody in a couple of papers. So whether that's a neon sign like Buddy has or we have or a fancy video or a CO2 gun or some flashing lights. You know, there's couples are seeing 25 uh no, not 25. They're seeing, you know, 75 to 100 different booths at some of these bigger shows, if not more. What's going to make you stand out from the six or seven other DJ companies? So um, for us, when I started talking to my consultations, they said uh, out of all the photo booths, and there was probably like 15 photo booth companies, yours is the best. And you're not even a main photo booth company. It's just everybody else just sucks. So you put out a quality product and be personable, you'll be successful with these things. I think one of the things I've seen a lot in the in the wedding shows has been the photo booths um, that are the 360 kind. Uh, 
have you guys seen it at uh, some of the shows uh, 360 for the booths not at, not at ours um those were a fad they're pretty much gone uh they're big with minority groups i'm not trying to be racist i'm just saying um the only time we've ever provided one was for uh either a quinceanera or like a african-american type event um corporate sometimes too but uh i think it was a fad that's kind of played itself out and now what's big is activation type stuff like ai photo booth stuff and custom branding and uh uh, there's a company here that makes like trading cards. So you get your photo booth picture taken and it prints out on a holographic trading card. So obviously somebody's going to hold on to that a lot more than they're going to hold on to a little photo strip. So I think that's, that's where the market for photo booths is moving. And three sixties are like, everybody here has a three sixty. You could find one for 250 bucks for three hours, really. So, uh, that fat has died here. I just see the three sixty. uh, uh, system is takes a lot of space up a lot of footprint because you yep. have that camera to go spinning around and i've seen people at wedding shows not at weddings at wedding shows when it goes around and knock into a couple people so kind of a scary thought there um i know jeff you really don't market for wedding shows and hunter but i'm gonna start with you jeff because you don't market with wedding shows and you don't really do wedding shows you market differently are you looking at your strategy for your fall uh, weddings or your fall events to market? Uh, I do one wedding show a year, but uh, it is a small one at a venue uh, here that I DJ at quite often, uh, the Gardens at Grey Gables. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it, it that's the only marketing that I do straight to uh, wedding couples. Um, and, you know, I'm not a um, huge wedding you know dj i'm not uh like some are just wedding djs and that's fine uh i branch out into schools and and you know you're going to market yourself differently for that um so for fall you know this is my busy time of year for school dances uh fall uh events and moving into winter you know christmas uh christmas parties and that type of thing so those are already set uh those were pretty much uh, you know booked in the spring and summer so uh, that's where my fall is right now. Okay, cool. And but you're you're pretty much set for this fall and winter. And you're are you looking for any? Do you market towards schools? Do you get a hold of schools? Say, hey, I did your spring fling last year. How about next year or anything like that? Or yeah, I will usually touch base with the people that are you know that that um, that uh, coordinated the event from the previous year. Sometimes it changes with schools um, and. Uh, you know, you just gotta, if, you know, if you can get in touch with them, they can usually get in, get you in touch with the people who are putting it on now or doing the, uh, the planning. So yeah, you just reach out and, uh, touch base with them and, um, uh, see what's, see what's, uh, happening. If they've got a DJ, if they've got one in mind, uh, if they don't, you know, then, you know, I'll, you know, hit them up. And so, yeah, it's just pretty simple. And that, that's a key thing there is reaching out to people and making those phone calls and just, you know, make, making a, the phone ring or send a message or email or text message and saying, hey, you know, w next year, we were, I already did it the past couple of years. Uh, would you like another one? I know um, Hunter over there in uh, beautiful South Carolina, I, I, again, I know you don't do wedding shows, but you do, uh, you do kind of mark yourself towards some of the school dances for your church and stuff like that. Do you reach out to your uh, pastor or do you reach out to a couple of pastors and talk to them and say, Hey, uh, is there anything coming up anytime soon for the fall or into the winter time well, that you're going to have uh, me do like a Halloween festival or any kind of like dance or something like that? Or, Well, I just wait for them to message me if they are interested in booking a DJ and I just hope for the best. I don't do gigs that often anymore. It's more, it's been very slow these last couple of years trying to get gigs and I never really reach out to them. I just wait for them to reach out to me if they're interested in booking me as a DJ. Okay. And again, that's, so I, don't, I, don't, I don't really reach out to other pastors per se. My church gigs have been on the sm slower and it's been on the steady since I moved to a new church. So we're still new. We're still getting things situated, but once we do get situated, I'll be doing some of their events have you ever reached back actually, out to your, the old pastor to the old church 
Mm, probably not because they have a new pastor. That's why I left because they got a new pastor. Okay. These northerners, yeah, these northerners keep moving in and changing everything. So I had to move to a new church. I had to. <laughs> okay, no problem. And, and I will be doing Iglesia Christian Church in Conway for their uh, Night to Shine next year. So they like me so much. This year, they want me back next year. So I'll be doing that. And how I do it is I just, uh, I, it's a word of mouth, text messages, Facebook messages, all that kind of stuff. So I don't really do wedding shows. Okay. So I'm going to go over to John. John, I didn't get a chance to give you a minute or two to uh, talk a little bit about yourself because you have an interesting background. And uh, th this is one of the reasons why I wanted to ask you uh, about a little bit about marketing because you have some interesting uh, um, job out there, especially uh, for one of the companies you work with right now, but also stuff you do on your own. If you want to tell everyone a little bit about your background, a little bit about uh, John Colley and about the uh, his uh, fun time uh, starting with like radio time and uh, so forth. Go on with the, everything else you've done. Yeah, it's it's you, you hate to put a date on how long you've been in business because eventually once you've been in long enough, it works against you. You want to be young enough to be, you know, relative to your your clients and not twice their age. But these brides that I'm I'm when I when I started my Hot Tunes Productions in Boston back in 1983. Um. You know, I married the parents and now I've got their children and I'm marrying the children of the parents because you keep in touch with the people and you get referrals. And this has just been an ongoing thing. Now, I've, I had my own little entity happening and currently right now I'm very blessed to be involved with uh, 617 events and 617 weddings. They they do most of the heavy lifting. You know, I still get my personal gigs here and there. I, I you know, I started, you know, in college I went radio just to get FCC license. I wanted to be an FM jock and I ended up going into... Uh, you know, private uh, DJing, you know, for, you know, halls, clubs, bars, there isn't an AMVETS post or a, a foreign legion that I haven't played within, you know, 50 miles of where I live. So this new group now, as I say, does, does most of the work, um, 617, and they, they, they go to all the shows. Uh, it's Jimmy Espo and Bill DiOrio. Those are the two, two, the big dogs in the company. And they'll hit all the shows and they're on Wedding Wire and they're on Not. We probably do between 250 and 300 weddings a year split between 15 DJs. So what falls on us generally is anywhere between 15 to 20 a year. Um, I'm on the corporate side. So we're going into hotels and setting up PA for, for Harvard or for uh, Holyoke University or just the stuff that's happening in Boston. A lot of um, not traditional weddings. It's, it's, it's more, they want a PA, they want a projector screen. We're, we're putting on a presentation. But if the weddings start to stack up, you know, we can hop in because we've had our hand in weddings between, you know, Bill and I probably, you know, 80 years of experience. Um, for for the... Let me gather myself here for a second. So so this year, yeah, we I think we did 20 between Bill and I. Like, Bill will go do one or I'll get set one or... And it, it really depends on what, what the itinerary looks like for the day. If it's going to be a, an Arabic wedding. Well, we have someone that speaks the language and can communicate. We have someone that will be better, a better fit for that than say it was just, you know, they want a disco in 80s. There's a different guy that goes to that or they want quick mix or they want modern music. So there's, there's a level of specialty that everyone has. It's knowing, knowing what your strengths are to say, you know, I, I think I can take that on. Like if, if it was an entirely foreign language wedding, I'm probably not the guy, um, but there's enough within the team that someone could pick that up. And in between that, we, you know, we, we do a, a fair amount of events um, to just to, to your point, as far as, you know, how does it come from who's, who's doing the work and are we doing shows this year? Yes. Jimmy will fly up from Florida and he's, you know, predominantly based in Boston and he'll hit whatever's happening. And I can name a lot of towns that you guys won't recognize, but if there's something to be had in the fall to fill the calendar, for 2025 and 2026 um you know the the clerical guys the uh, the presenters the the talkers the salespeople go and do that whereas the djs don't necessarily have to have hands on when you're in a multi-op it's just you know it just eventually rains down on you that you know you don't have to say, go out and sell yourself because we're busy with work and and doing gigs and that's that's kind of my story 
And yeah, that's one of the things that's one of the reasons I, why I wanted you down here as well. Cause you working for a multi-op, there's a lot of DJs out there who do work for multi-ops, including a couple who watched the show. And I wanted that area to be represented, you know, on the show as well here and there. And it's, it's great uh, difference between, uh, you know, individual owner uh, or has a few employees and someone who has, who works for a multi-op and that multi-op, uh, you know, um, for black for a better term is a big beast because they do so much. They have people who just do marketing, they have people who just do sales, people who just do a certain part of the job versus us as a smaller, you know, individuals, we have to do all that, wear all those hats. So it's oh, kind of fun the ball to from the see. Beginning. No. You know, I, I know I, I, I met Bill plenty of times and talked to Bill. Bill's an awesome guy. Uh, it's, it's fun to see. And one of the things I know you guys have coming up soon is a big, huge fest in Salem. Uh, yes. You want to touch on that real quick? Sure. We, we do the uh, annually. It's the Salem, Massachusetts, the haunted capital of the world, the best place to be on Halloween in the world. Uh, and there is uh, a hotel there that's right on the green, you know, Salem being the traditional city of of witches and demons and ghosts and goblins. And we do the party every year at the Hawthorne Hotel, and it, it holds about a thousand people. We sell out every year, and this is the hundredth year anniversary. We're doing that this year, so there's going to be five DJs in five different rooms. Uh, it's going to be a full stage, full lighting, full production, and a pretty enticing cast of characters. So it should be a fun day. That's uh, look, look, look that up. If uh, just just to see some of the videos of years gone by, there's always a theme. This year's theme is Stephen King, uh, so everyone's room has a certain Stephen King book or uh, movie movie theme to to represent. But yeah, it's a, it's a massively huge party, and that's that's just a great time to be in in Salem if you ever get out there. Pretty much from August to November, this Halloween never goes to sleep in Salem. It's like visiting in spooky world. <laughs> so I think the two books I come to mind real quickly for me for Stephen King, the Tommy Knockers and uh, I think Maxim Overdrive. Both great, both great, yeah. absolutely. So, so it's, uh, it's a theme, yeah, yeah. So it's it, it's it's a lot of fun, a lot of things. Again, I wanted have that voice out there for people who do work for multi ops, uh, so they kind of have an idea. But it's very interesting when you pull back the curtain on multi op that has. 15, 20, 10 DJs working for them that, you know, all the different people do different things and everyone has a set job, which is kind of nice. But also the thing is that um, you don't, you as, you know, like a worker bee don't have to worry about all the headaches that the owner has to his bill versus, you know, we all have to worry about the, <laughs> all the headaches, you know, right. We have to worry about the office stuff, stuff and the advertising yeah. and, uh, you know, getting the word out and collecting the checks, getting paid enough time in advance. And that's, but, that's all that's handled. Thankfully. So but also own your own business too. You you understand that part of it too. And that's the thing oh, yeah. is that everyone here is a business owner. Yeah, sure. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> so the uh the next next, well, I guess uh I guess one half of the of my couple is not there. He ran off. <laughs> so I, I where, where, yeah, where, where our kids are off? being a nightmare right now. <laughs> oh <laughs> they're yeah. <laughs> Pretty All right, <laughs> I will come back then when uh, when he gets back there. Then but I'm gonna good. go to Sean. I'll be here. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I know. I'm gonna go to Sean. Uh, Sean, uh, what's your plan for the uh, for the uh, upcoming fall and winter? Are you looking at going into some wedding shows? Because I know you do wedding shows. And I, are you looking at booking a couple of them? Are you looking at booking a bunch of them? Are you looking at how many you want to do? I'll probably do maybe one this winter. Um, we're we're pretty packed right now schedule wise, so I don't think I have an open weekend until January, February right now. Um, probably do one show, but otherwise, what I like to do is usually just buy their lists, talk to the show organizers. They will usually sell you the lead list, write up a nice email campaign, put out your service guide, shout it, throw it to every single person who attended that event and real couple of them in uh in my opinion it's a lot better return on your investment versus spending 15 hard for a booth hard 50 for a list i think our book rate's about the same whether we do the list or the show and i i think the the successful thing sometimes is the list if, if you get it and you you kind of hit it but here's one of the things i have i just want to see a show of hands because i know what i do uh, who here 
when you get a list for a, uh, a wedding show, uh, who here sends an email to the people on the wedding show at the list? Who sends an email? Email? Yeah, of course we do. Okay. Who sends a text message? Me. I don't do emails. Texting. Nobody, nobody looks at their emails anymore uh, unless they want to. So texting, everybody sees it. It's in their face. They're either going to ignore you or respond to it. But an email is a lot easier to ignore than a text on your phone. Yeah, I I do text. I I stopped doing emails. I stopped. I started doing texts in um, a year ago, and that seems to be uh, attract more people in it than just emails a quick, do. Just a quick, hey, it was great meeting you. Uh, you know, reaching out to see if you're interested in scheduling a time to chat further or something. Just something as simple as that. Our emails always get sent to spam uh, because Gmail does not play well with Outlook. So I don't even bother with emails anymore. The email list is useless to me. Brantley, you're muted. He muted himself. <laughs> so, you know, when you get that list, yeah, I will definitely email it first because that most of those lists, those customers did not text message in to make the reservation to the expo or whatever wedding show you're a part of. And one big thing that Alan Berg, you know, always talks about in the show is continuing the continuity of the conversation, whatever means they are already used to using. So if they were already utilizing email from that wedding show, make sure in your subject line, you tag that wedding show's name, and that should almost immediately get them to open it. And I have to agree with Alan Berg on it. When I did run, you know, right before I left the multi-op last year or this year, one of the things we did was working through a, one of the expo lists. And I will say my percentages were higher on those we emailed than texted. However, again, I will have to fully agree with what Alan Berg says. If they hit you up by email, continue with email until it's time to make that phone call. If it's text message, keep the text message until it's time to actually email them what you want or send a proposal, depending what CRM you're using. And he has been absolutely spot on with that I, I i noticed that um i sent a lot of stuff via text message including using zoom zoom link for meeting but our contracts and stuff like that we actually send them and tell them to get a, a contract and you know the link for payment and so forth and so on to an email address and then the paperwork and, then, and i use uh vibo so they do everything through an app so i try to do a lot of things electronically and make it as easy as simple as possible. So it's 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 one of the things that I feel that if you're going to do shows, doing an all above approach is not a bad thing. Doing email, doing text, you know, keeping that chain that 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 conversation, which is very true, open and going. So, uh, Brantley, what about you? What what, what are you uh, doing this uh, fall for? Are you doing a bunch of shows? Are you doing? Uh... Yeah, actually, I'm definitely doing two. And I'm really considering doing a third, which would be in my former business partner's main market. But Rod, you know, and so, and part and parcel with that, Rochester definitely has a little bit more money to spend than La Crosse, Wisconsin. And selling the you know premium packages, I'm really considering going to the Rochester uh, show in October. I'm doing one here in La Crosse, which is kind of a live action setting show where your DJ booth is set up like you would for a wedding. And how you, there's a lot to it. And for example, they're going to have different vendors as a part of it as well, doing each one of their aspects. I don't know how the whole day is going to work out, but we'll see. And then in January, I'm actually going to be doing the biggest wedding show in lacrosse. And because I think I probably overspent on it and went for full bells and whistles for a couple of G's, I've got the VIP package with them, which puts me you know, in the first page or two of their listings as a VIP vendor, they're giving me preference on where I want to set up because I was the first DJ to even sign up for it. And I did all of this stuff literally within days of myself leaving the multi on, knowing that, yeah, I, I'm going to have to spend a lot more money than I was planning to this year. But I'm already seeing in my CRM when I opened it up today, I'm like definitely seeing the end result, you know, of all the work I put in thus far paying off. 
And that, that's the important stuff is making sure that I mean, any dollar you invest into marketing, you're kind of getting it back. And that's the, that's the important stuff. If you if the show is going to charge you X amount of dollars for a booth, you want to get as much money back as possible because it's, it's advertisement. Exactly. I mean, if I and with each one of the shows, if I and you know get one wedding per show, I break even on it. And I know my track record, at least when I was with Ever After Entertainment and when uh, I left the company I was with for a little while years ago and actually swiped the copy of the list off my former boss's uh, computer, I know I can sign at least 10 to 20 of these weddings off of each one of these expos. And usually we see about 250 to 300 invitees or couples per these shows, if not more. So I I would expect between the three I'm doing, I should finish all the Sundays and Fridays I want in 25 and get a really good headway into 26. And that's that's important, you know, especially, again, you want to look at, I already, we already have two or three, without looking, two or three weddings already booked for 2026 already. Uh, so it, it's, it's one of the things that you, you want to make sure you're ahead of the game. And that you're attracting, you know, customers, clients. And it doesn't matter if you like Jeff. Jeff does a lot of schools and stuff like that, as well as uh, special events. And you, you got, you got other people who do special events and schools. Um, you want to make sure you're attracting that clientele, especially if you do a corporate clientele, kind of like what Six One Seven is doing out there in Boston with John. Uh, you know, they're they're attracting those client corporate, uh, you know, people coming in and saying, "Hey, we can do this, we do that," and. I also believe also capturing pictures and showcasing what you can do at an event, uh, you know, for an event is a good thing. When you're talking to someone, you walk in and say, hey, this is what we did for these last few weddings. This is our setups. This is what we can do for you if you want to. And that's that's always a good thing. <clears throat> I'm going to go over to uh, Jordan and Taylor um, now that uh, <laughs> Jordan is back. <laughs> um I I know I know we do you you and I that you know Tracy and myself and the two of you uh, the four of us we uh, we do the one wedding show you know that we get the chance to talk to and stuff like that and have fun at. Um, is there other wedding shows you guys are doing over there, or is there anything else you're trying to do for marketing? Try to you know make customers come knocking on your door. Yeah, uh, we just did one about a month ago. There isn't really any coming up in our area right now. Um, there was one we were doing for a while uh, in January, one of the biggest ones. I don't think we're going to do it next year. Um, it was a really bad turnout last year, um, but it was also like negative 50 that day. <laughs> um, it was just freezing. It was a terrible snowstorm. It just did not have the turnout that we that it normally did. But we actually um, we have been working on filming a commercial. Right now, uh, we've been filming at a couple of our weddings, and we are doing some filming uh, this week, some talking head and that kind of stuff, trying to bring that, like, our our uh, whole mission to light. Um, but other than that, we kind of rely on – So Taylor does a lot of social Yeah, I don't really like to do shows because I have no interest in mingling with groups of people and coming towards me. But, I mean, I do them when I have to do them, but <laughs> I would rather just – Word of mouth is my thing. We get a lot of better. A lot of word of mouth. Yeah, we get a lot of word of mouth. Um, but yeah. we've we've also found that at the shows, it's not the couple we're looking for. Yeah, if they're not the couple I want, a lot of them just want to like find the cheapest. We get a lot of race to the bottom type stuff, and I'm like, eh, I don't know. You, you know, you guys just said one great thing: the word of mouth thing. We and yeah. One reason I actually love doing shows is more often than not, it's at least in the market I'm in, the venues and vendors that refer me constantly are going to be there. And with that, there are couples that are going through all of these and ever, like my business partner really got kind of, and part, former business partner, he got kind of mad about it last January when we were at the wedding expo here in La Crosse. Every couple that was coming up to me, hey, Celebration sent me to you. Hey, this venue, this vendor. And no one was even coming to our booth to talk to us about booking other DJs. It was, and he's like, it's just the beat, beat, Bretley show. And I'm like, what do you expect? You know, we're at a show and with all of our prefer, every list I'm on. And it was right at the tail end of that wedding season where 
that I was at Celebrations and Cargill almost every week for about two months. All they were doing was sending brides to me. It was unreal. But that's the biggest other benefit about a wedding show is if a venue or vendor knows you're going to be there and they have their couples coming in to check other things out, they're going to send them to you. And that's so helpful. To kind of build on that point, I've, I would say we've made more connections or better connections with vendors at a lot of those shows. Um, some, I mean, that's how we met buddy. <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> well, you know, going back to that word of mouth, I do get referred a lot on social media, like all through Facebook because of uh, being referred. Yeah. yeah. I don't because I'm a a-hole and uh, I'm fine with it. It's uh, it's it's come up in a couple of the groups that I'm in and I'm totally fine with it because uh, I'm not looking to be friends with my competition. And, you know, I get most of my leads because people see my work, they like the work and they want what I deliver. And uh, if you don't want to refer me or you don't want think I'm a nice person to refer to, that's on you. Uh, everybody that's ever worked with me says I'm wonderful because I am. But and here, yeah, you know, and, I, yeah. I don't come off that way. And I'm not like, oh, my God, I'm so happy. You guys are uh, and you're Ray of Sunshine, dude. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm like straight up like, this is what I do. If you like it, great. If not, like, you know, I'm I'm not going to beg and plead for your business, but I think we offer a great service at a competitive price. And, you know, I'm I'm just not the, I, I had a buddy that, that I spent like an hour talking to and he's like, yeah, there's people in our industry and in the Orange County area that have zero reviews and they get business simply because they're just a overall friendly, nice person to work with and they're easy on the eyes. And I think I'm decent looking, but I'm certainly not, uh, you know, a ray of sunshine, as you said. Like, um, I, just... well, I, I wouldn't call you voluptuous, but you know, you're all right. I would, I would I say Matt is a, for Matt is a, a, a nice looking gentleman. You know, well, we'll we'll, we'll leave it at that, so we don't uh, go me. down any rabbit hole. I get to that. Uh, me. You get a lot from Instagram. Something? I'm pretty <laughs> ugly right now. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I don't think Hunter, you come on. I haven't even gotten yeah. the sympathy. You know. Hey, let's get it on in two years. I know how good I look. Yeah. What did they used to say I about am. all of us? You got a face made for radio, isn't that? And what that's they used to exactly, say? Yeah, Brentley, and that's that's after you shaved the the whole yeah. whatever. I mean, here I had more. I, I was getting more luck with the goatee thing than I do now. <laughs> it's so weird. Well, it's buddy, okay, Brantley. It's okay. Here, we you, I we spent thirty three minutes either. on on wedding show stuff. Next topic. I'm keeping the show moving. <laughs> we still we, point, we still got you still got garbage cans. No, we still got other people to talk to because everybody's talking. So, Billy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, whoops. Billy. Let's, let's go. Let's let's let. What are you doing with uh, shows out there in Ohio? Uh, right now at the moment, I have uh, two booked for the next couple months. Uh, so I just did one here in the last like two months ago. So just I have two more coming up, uh, yeah. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. And then uh, what, what are you, are you do for marketing? Do you email uh, a lot, or do you do more texting, or you're doing more? Um, what, what do you feel is your big strong suit there? Well, I'm leaning out of the email part. Um, the only time I'm going to email is because a lot of schools I deal with now, they want the emails. They don't want to, the text messaging, but overall, like overall, I deal with just mainly texting um, in that sense. But yeah, when it comes to the schools, like I will email them their stuff. But other than that, like it's mostly just non-emails. Like I'm moving out of the email area. So yeah. And that, that's the important thing again, when you're, you, you have to understand what your clients want too. You may want to text but if your certain clientele may say, no, we want email because we need whatever, especially with corporate clientele, uh, you they have to do it with multiple people or with a school district may have multiple people involved. Yeah, They want that chain. Yeah. They want that, that chain filled. And then they have to send an email to multiple people. This way you're not sending text messages. And this way, maybe for legal requirement, maybe for other requirements. Uh, I had that, that happen. This I had that happen this past weekend with a school I worked with. Um, there was probably about three people involved, which was the main organizer, the treasurer, and the principal. So it was like all three combined into one. So I was like, yeah, this is an email type of situation. But overall, 
like as Matt said, and I'm going to touch back to what he said, is that emails just get lost. You know, th- nobody wants to see an email. Like emails drive me nuts. Like I'd rather, hey, let's text, let's talk over text, let's not play this email back and forth game unless I really have to. But I try and I found it's just such a headache to me, in my personal opinion. So, and again, especially. You have, you- yeah, especially when schools have their own Facebook page. You can just message them right there on Facebook. Boom. That too. you know. That it, but again, it's a lot of times when you start going into the back area of a school, especially a school district, they want to have those email because it goes to this person, goes to that person, goes to this department, that department. And I can see that. Uh, Dwayne, I, you know, I said the best for last. Uh, <laughs> someone who has worked in the school system for many years, now officially is uh, – he retired now uh, out there working full time as a DJ and enjoying himself. Question for you: What, what are you uh, marketing yourself more for? Are you going to go into getting uh, schools more? Or are you going to go into more wedding more? I know you just uh, I, I you just did a wedding. I saw pictures of on mm-hmm. Facebook, which good going for you and congratulations. What do you want to market yourself more for now that you have the extra time and the bandwidth to focus on your business? No, uh, I really haven't like pinned down like a certain direction, but I have reached out um to um a multi op. Um and, and um we we're supposed to get together in November to go over some things just to see how I could fit into um his company. And so in the meantime he had told me to um pretty much since he saw that I was getting gigs on my own, to kinda of, like tag them into and put pictures up and try to get reviews so he can kind of like, like gauge uh, how he can, I can fit into his group. So that's where I'm leaning towards. So I can, it's not more so just trying to get like a Pacific um, gig, but just, just getting out there, just doing it. Well, yeah, you got to make money, you got to pay bills. <laughs> yeah. But uh, um, I know that um, talking to a multi-up stuff like that, you're going to, maybe hopefully fill a few dates in there, but you're still going to do your own thing and your own marketing mm-hmm. then as well too, correct? Yep. I'm starting okay. to get, in fact, uh, lately, uh, a lot of people have been um, going to my website because it's like I'm getting a lot of strange texts. And then when I ask them, how did they hear about me? They'll say, oh yeah, we went to your website. So somebody's out there, you know, giving me referrals. Now I oh, also like to thank, I would like to thank Kevin for hooking me up with the um with the wedding gig. I think I also think Kevin's probably going to use you some more time. So uh, he uh, again, I, I I've talked to him too, and uh, I know he was uh, very appreciative of your assistance and especially taking care of the the client. And uh, that that was really really awesome. And glad I can help both you and Kevin out. Mm-hmm. And Kevin is uh, talking a little bit in uh, in my ear uh, that he had. Uh, I have the uh, spring arrow sign, oh, spinning arrow sign that he holds. So he stands in the street corner with the sign <laughs> he spins around for uh, himself for saying, you know, DJ here for hire. So, and then he said he does email and then he said, no problem, Dwayne, or no problem, D. So he called you D. So you guys are that tight now. You're calling us by my first letters. There you go. It's K and D. There you go. <laughs> So I wanted to ask really quickly, kind of still sticking on the, on the subject a little bit with like what Matt was talking about. When you do uh, either a wedding show or a vendor a venue, when you go into an event, do you talk to the other vendors there and try to get not, you know, try and talk to them a little bit and find out, hey, do you do references or anything like that? Do you try to build bridges with other uh, vendors or do you just try to do your own thing and say, Hey, you know what? Uh, I'll work with you. No problem. But you know, I, I'm going to do my own thing. I know Matt's going to do his own thing. That's, that's his he, thing. He said, it I, my favorite, my favorite thing at a wedding, not my favorite, but one of my favorites is getting all the drama at the vendor table. Uh, we love to just bad talk others. Uh, it's just <laughs> not me. Like I'm not the one that brings it up, but like, like it's always the horror stories that are what gets brought up at the tables. So, um, you know, it's, I don't really feel like a wedding show is the best place. Like if you've never met someone to do marketing or networking, I think after you've worked with somebody and then you see them at a wedding show, then it's a good opening because then, Oh, Hey, so nice to see you. We work together here. 
And then hopefully they remember you'd be like, oh, yeah, that was such a great party. Great. I would love it if, you know, insert referral network here. Um, I mean, because we have we uh, it's not that I don't get any referrals. I mean, we have like four coordinators that like they know that I'm perfect for their couples um, and they always try to refer me. I'm just so booked that like I'm usually never available, but uh, you know, I, I did a venue this past weekend and it went great. And they responded to my story when I reposted it with them tagged and they posted it and they're like, Oh, well, this was so great. And I'm like, Oh, that's awesome. I'd love to be a part of your, your whatever referral. Your preferred that, vendor that, list. That's, that's an important Ignored. thing there. How many people <laughs> here when they post stuff, to social media, tag a photographer or a venue or you know they the tag time. other people yeah. in well, there they gave us the info yeah sure yeah you find out you know, okay i'm at the hilton you know hilton downtown boston okay or i'm at this venue or hey um so and so photography company is here doing this or you know you start tagging those people when you start doing social media it it, it it's kind of a nice rapport going back and forth with them and that's another way of marketing. And also, not to sound bad, especially if they're a large photography or a large popular venue, you can showcase that and say, hey, look, I was at this venue. Look, I even tagged the venue. The venue then liked my uh, you know, Perfect. my wedding or my corporate event or whatever I did there. Perfect you example. Want... And then I got I to gotta leave because I'm getting dinner. But no problem. Uh, I, I, make, uh, I have a videographer that comes out to my events. Not all of them, but whatever I pay him for. Uh, and he'll do a full vertical recap reel. And, you know, he shoots it with his nice camera rig, gimbal, all the the whole, you know, it's like an addition to the videographer. So we did one at this country club here. Uh, and then what you do, this is a great tip for everybody. Uh, venues love to showcase themselves, but only if it's professionally done. So your little crappy reel that you shoot with your iPhone or a couple of pictures that you snap, they're out of focus. They don't want that on their page. But if you put a beautifully crafted reel together that looks like a professional videographer shot it, like almost all the venues that we've done these for accept it as a collaborator. If, you know, if they accept collaborator posts at all, some of them are just like, we're only going to show like our business and our business alone. I had a couple, this one at a country club reached out last night because she saw the video. Hey, I'm getting married at this country club. I saw your video. I checked out your page. You're exactly what we're looking for. And uh, now we have a call scheduled tomorrow. So collaborators uh, and the other pro tip with adding somebody as a collaborator if you add the couple as a collaborator they're going to love it because it's more content for them it goes on their page and that way anybody that loved the work you did there that say like oh you know the dj at J uh, jason's wedding was so much fun but i wish we knew who he was because maybe they're not such good friends with the bride and groom it's on the bride and groom's page you're tagged right there boom they go to your page boom there's your referral done so the collaborator yeah. stuff is good but it has to be professionally done because nobody wants a crappy uh you know android shot reel on their uh profile on instagram so i i guess the key thing there is hire for a videographer to follow you around and uh make I mean, a bunch of I, uh, so content i i i pay mine between two like two and three hundred bucks um and i just hope that the couple you know tips me and that way it comes out of the tip money if not you know, it's, it, it's, uh, it helps me out and it helps the videographer out and it helps the, the venue out and the couple out and helps everybody out. So, you know, you go. it's, it's professional content is huge right now. You don't want, uh, especially if you want to try and increase your rates, you can't be shooting with, uh, you can't be shooting with an Android for sure, but like an iPhone will at least look decent, but there's, there's just such a different look to something that's professionally done. So I guess, uh, I guess I'm out of luck. <laughs> no, you're not. Luck. The thing is that again, you you're also in a different market, and Matt's in a large market, so that's different markets do different things. Anyway, I gotta go. I'm I'm having dinner. We'll Peace go out, have brother. fun, eat bon appetit, right, and that. enjoy dinner. Right. Right. I got I got something interesting that I'd like to contribute. We we go just ahead. did a wedding Saturday, and there were three photographers. There was the professionally hired photographer, you know, big camera with the flash and whatever, running around doing all the pictures. And the couple hired social media content creators, two young girls, probably 20, 21. Um, and they were just running around with, with professional gear. They weren't shooting stuff on cell phones to take reels and shoot stuff for social media publishing. Um, so these two came in and, you know, so I'm coordinating with the photographer, like, Hey, we're getting ready to 
do the cake. I'd go find them. Hey, we're getting ready to do the cake. Uh, they got paid something like like twenty five hundred bucks to be there, and, I, and I'm sure the actual photographer was more. But these are just content content creator, you know, Instagram and Reels. So there's 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 a whole career to be had in that to having really really sharp, crisp, clean photography. And you know, buddy, I know you famously said before, if you get really good photos of a venue and you make it look good, tag it to their Google page, tag it to their website, let them see how good you made the place look, tag it under your business name. So people that are looking through, thinking about doing their event at that venue go like, oh my God, that's the look we want. Who's that? That's a DJ. Link him, call him, message him, IG him, you know. Um, so they're, that's just the whole, the photography in, in the weddings is just took a whole new turn because I had never seen, you know, a content creator specifically in a role at the wedding. And they were so good about not getting in the photographer's way, not being around the wrong side of the bride when the photographer was taking shots. I'm like, this is probably something you have to kind of really be mentally sharp to pull off, to be there, but just really be that fly on the wall that you're not in everybody's photographs. You know what I mean? Um, so that was just something I just I thought it was kind of strange to see that this past weekend. I'd never dealt with them, but they were really pro and, uh, you know, they had a really good service and we t we tagged them on IG and they tagged us back. So they might be something we can offer to a client in the future. It's like it's more than just the photographer. You need uh, up close the action shots, the crispy details on stuff that maybe a wedding photographer would overlook and say, you know, he's been to 100 weddings. He's never shot that before. There was no interest. But now it's now you're marketing to a different a different bride, a different groom, you know, they want to see things in a different way. They want that, you know, quick reel of, you know, scene changes and picture flips and things like that. Just, I thought that was interesting. Was, uh, so with, with John saying that, who here would like to see, you know, in their area or would they do it themselves? Kind of that content creator kind of vibe. Who'd like to have that for their uh, next event? You know, we have a hands. lot of them by us. Uh, we have, we have, well, pretty right much here. every event has content creators by us down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's newer, but me. I'm seeing it almost every event. Yeah, I'd like to see what their end product was. I mean, I saw them taking a ton of photos. You know, they take ten thousand photos, you only get to see about fifty of them. But you know, just they were very much present and very much connected with what was going on and wanted to you know deliver the best. It's like hiring another photographer that has a we separate purpose other than the traditional photos. You know what I mean? We have one that specifically does shoot in a manner of where you could make those TikToks with them, if that makes sense. Like the ones, you know, where they jump up and then when they land kind of thing and they're in a different outfit, like she shoots them in that manner so you can make those reels later. And most of the ones we work with don't actually make the reels for the couples. Yes. They're just capturing the content unedited raw images they send it all within usually 24 hours to the couple for them to then make their social media content with the way they want to do it it seems to be that's how they're doing it around here too so and going back off the review thing uh alan berg talked about that and it's a great one every time you're at a venue other vendors you work with if you like them, go leave them a five-star review under your business page because odds are, one, they're going to leave you a business review back, plus all of their customers are going to see your business, see that they've worked with you, and you have a great chance of reaching out. Uh, Alan Berg talked but about I, that in his podcast a couple months ago. But here's the thing. Here's the dilemma, and this is why I hesitate sometimes and I, I've thought about doing that. This is a, this is my thought. And I, I want to hear you guys, what you guys think about it. It could also look as that you're favoritizing, you have favoritism toward one venue or one person or one thing. And I understand that giving a review on multiple people, that's, you know, people leave reviews. But what happens if you, they didn't like you? They're going to leave a bad review on you then? You know, so it, it no, can, they're, it, gonna, they're just going to take the review and, I'll leave you one back. And you know, I'll I'll well, even who do we lose? add on to that. Oh you, lost fire. If we're there at a venue, we know how the venue has received us after we're done. There's already been some rapport between venue management, event coordinator, or whatever. And if we do that good of a job, we shouldn't question 
being able to leave a review and getting one back. And if it shows us playing favoritism, and for example, someone like myself, Matt, you, Sean, all of us here, we have a certain level and a standard that we achieve and work for every wedding. Well, venue's going to recognize that, and the people that the vendors are going to recognize that. Couples see that as well and realize that we're only giving reviews to the stellar people that we work with. And favoritism or not, they're going to see that and know there's a reason. They probably work really well together. And I will post about this at least two or three times a year that when you put vendors that work well together in the same wedding or in the same event, the end result is going to be better than what you want because they know each other. They know what to expect. There are photographers here that I can walk in, you know, I'll message them early in, early in the week, be like, see you on Saturday. And from the moment we, you know, hit the ground in the venue till the end of the day, when they leave, it's a very, okay, you ready? Let's go. And it's cut and dry and you know how to work with them. Once other people see that, they're more inclined to invite you to be their DJ or invite, you know, one of the ones that have reviewed you to be part of their day. And I'm, I'm just saying it, it, it sometimes can be perceived the wrong way too. And I, I understand the positive side of it, but you also may have a negative side. And that's, that's the thing you have to be prepared for because someone, you, somebody say, well, your fit, your, your favoritism toward this person or toward that venue or this photographer, you're trying to leave a positive review and you, you should always be positive. You should never, if you have a, a, to me, if you have a bad experience with another professional, maybe they had a bad day. Maybe it was an off day for the, for the kitchen or whatever. And you should just say, okay, fine. Great. I, I, but if it's consistently all the time, then maybe it's a venue or to a vendor. You say, Hey, I, I'm okay. I'll work with you. But you know, again, I wouldn't refer anyone to you versus, you know, someone you refer to, I think that's a big thing. The people who would you would would you or would you not refer someone to this vendor is the question you would have to ask. And if you're going to refer someone to that vendor, those are the ones I would probably leave a review for versus a vendor that I'd be like, eh, they're okay, but I won't leave a review for them. No, no review is, but it kind of sends a message too, though. Oh, exactly. Did you leave us a review? Well, like you showed up late, you left your bags in front of my table. You stole my couple for 45 minutes when you said it was going to be 20 minutes. Like, maybe I'd just rather say nothing and just, you know, did they play nice with others? You know, that's the relationship you want between the photography and catering and stuff. They should know who you are. But if if they do something that's above and beyond, say something nice about them because it just it comes back to, to pay you tenfold over. Yeah, never, never, yeah. never like be negative. Sub, never be negative. That subpar venue. Like that subpar venue that I had nothing but issue with rustic occasions and loyal. I, after every event, if I haven't reviewed the venue and, you know, people I've worked with, I will go and review them. Or, like you said, I just won't leave a review. And at times when, you know, you see, you know, entertainers or other vendors leaving reviews for everybody, but not seeing a group of them not reviewing one place, that might tip you off that it might look good on the outside, but the vendors working there just don't like being there. So that's my two cents on that thought. So I, I really quickly, another show of hands. Who here is going to leave a review for another vendor or venue uh, within the next week or so of the past, maybe past couple of weeks you've done a event at or a gig with? So, okay. All right. And that that's the thing. You know, those content creators, that, that could be something you could leave a review for or a photographer or bakery or... Again, a venue, yeah, and a venue level manager. level of professionalism and some common sense goes a long way too. You know, yes. <laughs> common sense you don't need is a very important, especially in... to make your own content. Yeah, buy yourself right. an eighty dollar gimbal, and you can take some decent video footage yourself. I think Matt's wrong about his whole thing about having it to be for professional. Yeah. It's it's all, his opinion. It's 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 Matt's opinion. Content. It's it's what he thinks. All my current content is produced I, on I, I, fifteen maps and. If you look at what news stations are actually giving their reporters now, they're giving most of the reporters that don't have photographers sent out with them the iPhone 15 Max Pro. Okay. If you don't, there's a learning curve with it and learning how to actually use it for what you want, but it's very usable for all of our content. 
I think Rachel is still using a 14 on hers, isn't she? I think so. Yeah. A gimbal. Seriously, a gimbal does so much stabilization. I, yep. And they work great. I, I upgraded a while ago. We uh, bought um, from actually from B&H uh, for photography. It's a gimbal and a Sennheiser uh, shotgun microphone that plugs into the USB-C port on uh, our our phones. And Tracy has the um, uh, Samsung Flip. Uh, her camera is decent. Her cam, you know, she captures some good pictures. And then, of course, we're going to do some recording. Recorded on my phone because I have an S24 Ultra, so it has a higher quality cameras. It has more lenses. So again, it, it's it, it's a more cinematography kind of feel. And to look at your settings. What kind of setting you have? Do you have it at, you know, do you just have it at 720? Do you have it at 480? Do you have it at, you know, if you have it at 2K or 4K? What hertz you have it at? Is it is it 40? Is it 30 frames? Is it 60 frames? You want good quality. You have to capture good quality. The other thing does take space up, but spend a little time editing, spend a little time doing things, and look at things. And stuff you're going to post, post clear, clean pictures. Like Matt was right. No one wants to see blurry pictures that you're trying to post and go, what is that? Is, is that a ring or is that something metallic thing shiny because you're so far away and you're using that digital zoom it just looks like a bunch of shiny gl a blur, you know? <laughs> well, my pictures and video always come out good because I got the 15 Pro uh, Max. It, I, I always get the best. If you can spotlight a venue and make them look good in the pictures that you tag them on the website, like, wow, we've had nine DJs this month of weekends and this one really made the place pop. Maybe we should give him a call and say, you know, can you be on our preferred vendor list? Because that's how you earn it. You know, you don't just say you're going to go through the motions. You actually do something that's different than everybody else and get noticed. You know, and that's that's the other thing, Matt. And Matt is like, you know, he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't care about being on our preferred vendor list. And nothing wrong with that. Some people don't care about that. Some people do. I care about it. I think other people here care about being on preferred vendor list because. If you're on preferred vendor list, they're one of the first people to recommend, oh, you need to call DJ so-and-so or photographer so-and-so or this company. And you need to work with them and make sure you have a good relationship with that vendor and with that venue. And that's the important stuff. Well, uh, that's it. That they can say, we've had good relations with this person or this person's always gone the extra mile and you know never disappoints. That's that's the ultimate recommendation if they yeah. hear it from a venue. So. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what market you're in, you need to market yourself. Again, we're, uh, except for John, you know, he's a multi-op, and it looks like Dwayne's going to maybe do some work at a multi-op. But, you know, a lot of us are independent, mm -hmm. and we have to market ourselves and, and sell our wares, uh, either on the interwebs or at a wedding show, or like uh, Kevin says, he stands on the side of the road with the sign, you know, the arrow board uh, flipping it and tossing the air and stuff like that at street corners. So if you see a DJ at a street corner tossing it in Ohio, you know that's Kevin. Uh, he uh, has his number on there. Make sure you give him a call and give him some gigs. He does do weddings and special events. And as I always say, I thank you guys for coming in tonight and having fun. Uh, last week, last time, again, we were off last week because I had a wedding show. Uh, I had Jeff do the outro. But this time, I think I'm going to have... Um, I'm gonna have Sean do the outro now this time. So, Sean, if you don't mind, the voice for doing a special event this week, he's on remote again. Uh, be the voice here and end the show for us. All right, thank you guys so much for tuning in to the DJ Roundtable. Make sure you like, follow, and share. We'll see you next week. Bye. Peace out. Good night. <laughs>